Next talk is by uh, Brad Chapman, and uh, he'll uh, tell us about building a community menagerie of automated variant validations. Your, your pronunciation is awesome. That was sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, so uh, I have five quick minutes uh, to talk about the importance of validation. Um, my name is Brad, uh, and I work at the uh, Bonf Max Corps at Harvard Chan School in beautiful Boston. And so if, if you don't pay attention to anything else and you're interested in something from this, uh, you can go to j.mp bc bio links and you can get these slides and uh, other similar type talks from there, so you can grab everything from there. So what, I, what I'd like to start off with is an assertion that you have a variant calling pipeline. And since I'm completely biased, I'm going to say you have a, a really good variant calling pipeline called BC Bio, um, which uh, you can port and run anywhere. And uh, get, it has a ton of different options for, for uh, doing different callers. Um, and so I think you, know, you get this set up, and it's doing the uh, conversion from FastQ into VCFs, and you're getting some outputs, right? And I think your first question should be, is this pipeline any good that I just downloaded and started using from the internet, right? How, how good is it? Is it good on my specific data types? And so what we do, I think, uniquely in BC Bio that I talk about is integrate uh, with validations so that validations are an integral part of what BC Bio does, and you can easily generate plots. Um, and comparisons and numbers so you can actually see how things are doing. So I'm gonna have a bunch of plots like this, and if you're really interested in these, all the links are at the bottom so you can dig into all the intricate details. For five minutes, I'm just gonna say, you know, on the left side is sensitivity, on the right side is specificity. You can tell, you know, how much you're detecting, how, how well you're actually detecting it with all, without a bunch of noise. And then there's a bunch of stratifications by different types of variants, by um, different samples by different things. And so in this case, you have uh, GATK4, which just came out this year. And if you're curious if it works well on your data and you're working on human build 38, this is a validation that tells you that um, by running across three diverse genome and bottle samples, by running a bunch of different data types, um, it sort of it lets you know if you're running any of these data sites, you have confidence then that this is working well. And you can improve. And so if you're lucky, then you work on cool, easy, easier stuff like germline calling, right? If you're not lucky, like me, then you work on hard samples that no one else wants to work on. Um, stuff like low frequency calling and uh, you know, cancer with tumor only FFP samples that are a bunch of noise. Um, and so you need validation sets for these as well. And uh, BC Bio provides them and is working on providing more of them. And so this is a, a good case where you have real KRAS mutations um, across a bunch of samples. You can compare the callers, see how they're doing, obviously much worse than if you have a germline sample, right? And it's a baseline for then helping to improve them. So, you know, we've captured sort of doing validation, doing difficult things. Um, then I think the next question is how you're doing. Can you use it to improve your callers and do a better job? And so it's 2018, right? And so you have to mention machine learning or your uh, talk will be invalidated. So. My talk, this is Deep Variant, which is, uh, uses, is an awesome uh, uh, sort of orthogonal approach to, to tools like GATK and Strelka and Freebase. Um, so it calls variants in a, in, a, in a completely different way using machine learning. And what's important if you do machine learning is it's, it's really important to have uh, solid input data that you're using for training and validation. And so this is a nice example of where a G deep variant was trained on genome and a bottle samples, and this is a completely orthogonal data set, uh, the CHM haploid diploid from Broad, which is a cool, uh, a cool data set, uh, completely different sequence technology, collateral way to, of making it. And you can compare deep variant and other callers as well and see how they're doing, and then use these as inputs to that to help improve it in, in general training. And again, if you're, if you're interested in this, there's the link for uh, all the, the intricate details. And so if I've convinced you in those slides that uh, BC Bio is good and validations are important, then probably your next question is, hey, I'd like to run these on my own data, on my own platform, uh, whatever that is. And so can you do that? And so thanks to the, the awesomeness of CETA Bell and all the tooling we've been hearing about, and I think we're going to hear a lot more about it in the next couple of days, um, yes, you can do that. Uh, you know, if you have local HPC, you can run it with a Cromwell or Toil. If you want to run on AWS or GCP or Azure, you can run that. You can spin up instances and run it there. We have some uh, Ansible scripts to help make that available. If you want to run it on platforms like Arvados, uh, DNA Nexus 7 Bridges, it runs on all those. So you can take the validations, run them where you want them to, and, uh, and make sure things are running. And so what this is trying to build is a set of automated validations for everything, right? So we'll just, we'll just take the whole world and, and validate everything. Um, but a set of things that are reusable things that people can use um, to make sure that tools and work well. And so we have a GitHub repo with all these in, written in CWL, so portable um, everywhere you can go. We have a set of 
validations based on these, which were all the links that I, I put together where it's sort of outputs and interpretations and, and improvements on those. Um, and more importantly, we have a community, right? This is why we're here to build a community. And uh, you know, Brian talked a little about this in the, in the context already of, of validations that they're doing the human cell atlas. There's a genome in a bottle, there's J4GH, there's an NH data commons. There's a bunch of different groups, all of which need to do validation, make sure things work. And um, this is an awesome community building these things up. So if it's a plea for if you're a validation nerd like myself and uh, you're interested in this, this is the community and the, hopefully the tooling you want to use to make that happen. So thanks for your time.